The following programme is powered by Ride the Wave Media. Introducing the best podcast in Utah, Radio Daybreak. Here are your hosts, Just Plain and Bex. Oh, yes, there it is. We're back, Bex. We are, and I love the background this week, Blaine. Oh, well, you know what? I'm not in my normal studio. Oh, got it. Where are you at? Um, can you guess whose studio this is? It, you know, looks like possibly Courtney Pearls. You are absolutely correct. <laughs> it's Courtney Pearls, the host of Practically Magic. I'm over here. We're working on a big project coming out in the fall. Awesome. It's got something to do with some witch movies. I'm telling you that right now. It's going to be fun. Honestly, I'll just tell you this. Yeah. Next week, I get to borrow the uh, the pop-up movie screening. Oh, now. hey, we're doing a big event over here, too. So, yeah, maybe we can combine events. I don't know. I'll have to get in touch I with I love her. it. I love it. So, yeah. there's always something popping off in Daybreak. Always. It's true. It's true. Yeah, it's we've true. got a lot going on. What do we hey, got going on? Summer Pool Party is this weekend. It is this Saturday, y'all, 6 to 8 p.m. Whoa. Be there. We got, we got to be there. Where is that? That is going to be at South County Pool in Riverton. So if you would like more information, you can jump on either any of our uh, social media sites, right? Like we've been sharing it like crazy. So visit us at uh, radiodaybreak.com. You can find us there. Um, Instagram, Facebook, you can find us there or goodbetterbex.com. Uh, or excuse yeah. me, what's my handle, Blaine? What is your handle? Is, <laughs> yeah, sure. What are those better dot Bex underscore. <laughs> we'll, we'll find it. They'll find the pool part. If not, they probably got a flyer in the mail too. So. Yeah, or, you know, just quickly scan that QR code now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> QR code. Sign up, get your tickets. It's free. The tickets are free. You just got to register to make sure we get a, a head count. That's right, because we're having food trucks. Food trucks out there. What else? We, we got we got the DBC, the Daybreak Business Community, yes. is where we where we also met our wonderful guest coming up today, Kate Kendrick. That's I can't wait to get to her. I know she's so interesting. Oh my goodness! Like it's wild. Everybody I've talked to, and I said we're going to interview Kate Kendrick. They were like, oh, she's the and they'll they'll fill in yes. a blank. And it's a different blank, and it's but wild. it's always different. Yes, exactly. <laughs> before we before we get to her, Cambria Davis. The astrolog- Daybreaks Astrologer is doing an incredible workshop for the DBC Thursday. Thursday. Yes, Thursday. Yes. Yep. That's it's going right. to be incredible. Get out there to that. You got to see that. These things are incredible for all the business owners around. If you want to sign up for one of these workshops, let us know that too. Yes. Oh, and Blaine, cool. uh, shout out where that's going to be held. Novel by Crescent Communities. Novel Daybreak by Crescent Communities. You got it. Right there on Lake Run Road. Yep. Novel Apartments. She's amazing, you guys. You don't want to miss this. Thursday evening. Is there anything else before we can get to this exciting guest? Oh, I don't think so. I think that's all I have. Anything you can think of? No, I don't think so. Kate Kendrick. Hello. Hey, welcome. Kendrick like Kendrick Lamar. Like Kendrick Lamar has nothing to do with him. No? <laughs> no. no. Me, I got to tell you guys this. I got to start off with this because I do have some insider information in the Kendrick Lamar camp. For anybody out there that's been watching the, the, the rat beef, it might be over, but I, I don't know. It may not. I've been talking to a couple people over there. But anyway, anyway, that's not what we're here for. We're not here for Kendrick Lamar. <laughs> we're here for Kate Kendrick. Thank you. That's right. Hey, Welcome. Like, well, seriously, thanks for having me. You walked into a DBC meeting well, a couple months back. Mm-hmm. And bubbly, personable, and literally didn't know what the hell she was doing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm right. right. I'm right. right? Like, this, yeah. But, well, I got a chance to meet King Benjamin, you know, Ben Brown. Oh, yeah. I met him at a comedy show and um, he was also working at the coffee shop here mm-hmm. in Daybreak. And yeah. I got to know him a little bit and kind of our stories are kind of parallel. I did not raise up on, I was not raised on a polygamous um, camp. <laughs> I do not, That's where it differs a little, huh? It differs a little, <laughs> but I mean, I really, I knew who he was and I was inspired by him and we, started connecting. And then after his comedy show at Wise Guys, he said, hey, you should come to this daybreak meeting that we have. It's just it's just like a little networking thing. So come on down. And I said, well, I like people. I like getting to know new people. And I love daybreak. I walk around the lake pretty much every day. I love it. So um, it turned out to be a really good choice. Now, remember, that's the that lake. That's how you say it. <laughs> that's how you say it? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Lake. 
Ochre. Yeah, that's an ochre. Ochre. Lake. Yeah. ochre. I didn't yeah. know. I learned something new. Thank you. Very yeah. 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 I do too. Every time he repeats it. <laughs> <laughs> but that's that's so so. It sounds like you were going through some sort of change or something. It, it, is oh well, the right, right right there was a change. We had a, right, there light. was a change in my lighting. It's decided. Oh, lighting. Me, so you can still well, see them. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, the story kind of goes where last year I turned forty five years old, and mm -hmm. for my birthday I got a sweet midlife crisis. Oh, awesome! Because in a matter of months I resigned from eighteen years of teaching elementary school. Wow. I quit grad school halfway through the program. I left the Mormon faith. I went from being pretty homophobic to being a fierce ally for my LGBTQ child. I divorced my husband. We sold our home. I had to pack up everything that I owned and cram it into a 10 by 10 storage unit oh and God. lived in daybreak for a little while until I could get back up on my feet. I was unemployed and happier than I'd ever been in my life. Just changing all of these things where a former version of myself probably would have been terrified had I wow. future, like this self gone to visit a younger version of myself she would have cried stayed in bed don't want this to happen but having gone through it I I can genuinely say I am happier than I have been ever and mm -hmm. I've learned a lot of skills a lot of tools along the way and that's kind of where I am at this point I'm at this crossroads trying to figure out where I'm I'm going in life yeah, you how, how long was that journey, Kate, that you went through all of that? What, what was that time frame? It was from May of last year until August of last year. And what in the so, world, so, all of that transition happened, all of that change in your well, life. Well, and then, yeah, and then I moved out um, in January of this year. But, wow. you know, my car died, my dog died. We just, I, I all I needed was like an unplanned pregnancy or a Lamborghini. Yeah. And yeah. Then, there is my midlife crisis for you right there. Oh my, oh my word. That is a short amount of time. So you're talking like six months, total life transformation. Sure. Yeah. Okay. So we have to ask like, what, what got you through that? Like, first off, where do you find the courage? Were you just like, I'm doing this and here we go. Uh, I, I've been asking myself that question for quite a while. And yeah. I think it's come to the, the thing that I've, I've come to the realization that it's because of a lot of the tools and the skills that I've learned over the years. Mm. So, I mean, yes, I've been in and out of therapy since I was younger to kind of help. Self-reflection is really important. Mm -hmm. um, being able to look at oneself and to be self-awareness is huge and um, recognizing that I need to work on some stuff. So mm. understanding what I had control over and what I didn't have control over was huge. Making yeah. that distinction rather than focusing on like all of these things that are happening are outside my control. Rather than focusing on them, I focused on, all right, these are the steps that I can take and these are the things I can do. I also made sure that community was huge mm. and it was very important for me to reach out and find people to support me through this. And it was remarkable what I was able to find because I genuinely don't think we can't do anything in our lives on our own. I mean, mm -hmm. we, yes, even the, the best, most self-made people could not get where they were, where they are today, had it not been for the help of other people. Did, so did you, I've been fortunate. Did you used to try to do everything by yourself and not ask for help and then shift that way? Oh, yeah. sure, sure. I think a lot of us do. I think. Yeah our pride, our ego kind of gets in the way and we're like, oh yeah, look at me. I can do everything on my own. But if we're really truthful and honest in who we are, we're, we're social creatures. Humans mm -hmm. are social creatures. We can't do things on our own. We need other people. And I'm extroverted. I'm, I'm an ENFP. I'm very, very extroverted. But even as an extrovert, I need my alone time. And even the mm -hmm. most introverted of people's people need other people as well. So yeah. yeah. They call it a midlife crisis. I don't think I don't think it's midlife crisis, though, Kate. I think it's your experiences and your skill sets coming together with age and its wisdom coming out. I don't think midlife crisis or what they what people think they are. I think it's the wisdom, and I think it's other stuff that you want to get out there and make the changes. And and if you're not happy, then guess what? I will figure out how to make myself happy. I think that's what you went through. I, so I experience and figuring it out and then, you know, just making those decisions based on the wisdom and the knowledge of exactly. life. 
Yeah. I hate, I hate the term midlife crisis. Yeah. And, and I only use that because I think people can relate. Really? So, yeah. yeah. It's so okay. what I think though is, um, I call it a midlife glow up. There you go. I love yeah. that. Like a midlife yeah. transition, a midlife awakening, a midlife glow up is really what I think because I am happier than I've been in a very long time. So um, in fact, there's another friend of mine that I met here who lives in Daybreak. And she and I connected uh, as she knew my husband through work. And we had met once maybe like four or five years ago. And then we went out for coffee a little while ago. And she said, you look like 15 years younger than you did wow. five years ago because I have had this awakening and this awareness and this ability to be authentically myself. Yeah. So if you want to hear a little bit about the story, it's uh, very, very complicated. But if you've got some time, I'll share some of that. Um, it started last year when my husband at the time made this unilateral decision to move out of state to the Pacific mm -hmm. Northwest. And I said, that's really cool. It was a second marriage for us. And he had kids from his first marriage. I had one. I have one from my first marriage. And I said, that's really cool on your part because you can, your youngest is just graduating from high school. And that's great for you. But my youngest, my only child has two more years of high school. Could you wait two years mm. to move? And he said, no, I feel called and inspired that I need to do this now. And, and, and he said, but... And, and my 16 year old is, is Theo. He said, Theo's gonna want to move with us. And I said, Theo, do you wanna move with us? And they said, no, I don't wanna move. Yeah, and that's so a they, hard age to yeah, uh, you leave know. your friends and you know, you've know you already started high school, got two right. more years. If you're playing sports, that's a mm -hmm. whole other issue. Right, and having a dad lives here. So like nothing was up there yeah. except for us. And Theo's like, no, I don't wanna move. And I said, well, okay. I'm put in this, literally put in a position where I had to choose between my husband and my only child. Mm. And you think that the answer would be simple. You choose your child, right? But I was in this position, I mean, a lot of religious pressure to make a marriage work. Yeah. Um, I made that decision that I would, I would move to the Pacific Northwest. Mm. And I told, I told Theo, I'm like, I'm so sorry. This is what's going to happen, but we're going to make it work. I'm going to like FaceTime you every day. We'll fly you up. I'll fly back. We're going to make this work. And but inside my mama heart was just like, I hate this. This feels yeah. Awful. yeah. So fast forward to last June. So a year ago, um, my husband was getting ready to move to Seattle for two months of training for his new position that he was taking in a different part. It wasn't in, it was in a different city in the state. And um, I stayed behind because I was in my, in my getting my master's. I had resigned from teaching because I was done. I think after 18 years, teacher burnout is a real thing. It really yeah. is. And I said, I was done with that, but I was going to try. I got like a job teaching drama up in Seattle until I could figure things out. And, um, but I was going to stay behind, work on my master's degree. I was halfway through master of arts and teaching fine arts. And um, I was going to make sure the house sold. I was going to make sure that things got packed up. And then I would join my husband in Seattle after, after Labor Day. Well, while he's gone, I have just a huge weight on my shoulders, just thinking about all of these questions that I had in my faith and thinking how it wasn't fair that I was put in this position to have to choose mm -hmm. between one family member and another. Yeah. It just did not seem fair. And um, but I had other questions and things. My, uh, and Theo is, is transgender. And I was also pretty close minded at the time. I was mm. like, no, that's not right. I'm your mom. I know better. I'm mm. smarter than you. You listen to your parents. You know, uh, that was problematic. Um, mm. And a lot of this weight was weighing on me until finally the, the end of July, I questioned everything and started reading and I did a deep dive and realized that my faith did not align with my beliefs. Anymore. Mm. And mm. I said, I'm, I'm done. I'm leaving this. And I called up my husband and let him know. Cause I think that was important for him to know this part because your faith is a yeah, big huge. Part yeah. Faith, right. And I called him up and I said, I, I don't believe I'm leaving the faith. And he said, how could you do this without my, without letting me know? 
Mm. That I'm letting you know now, and it's my faith, not yours. Mm-hmm. You can believe whatever you want. Um, but it was, and we had a conversation and ultimately decided that we couldn't stay married. He, wow. he asked if we could do a mixed faith marriage. And I said, no, we can't do a mixed faith marriage because a mixed faith marriage has to be based on, it has to be based on a solid foundation. And you put me in a position where I had to choose between you and my only child. That is mm. not a solid foundation. And so we divorced. We wow. were, we finished. But before that happened, I had the entire, the month of August to pack up everything I owned and deconstruct my faith and file for a divorce and deal with some really big challenges in my life. Yeah. I make sure that I was okay. And as I was a school teacher and now had to change everything, I can't go to Seattle anymore. I had to call them up the job that I had. And I said, I'm sorry, I'm not coming anymore. I'm staying here for my child, mm. at least until they graduate from high school. Mm. And um, during all of this, I was, and we had no money. I had no place to live. I was just in a very frantic state of mind, but at the same time, so much peace. I would wake up each morning saying like, how am I doing so well? Yeah. How am I doing as well as I'm doing because I should be freaking out, but I'm doing awesome right now. And I was able to You're like liberation. I'm, I'm free from all of this the heaviness. Well, it, was, it, was, it, was, it was, it was, it was, you were free. Cause you didn't have God anymore. You didn't have, you know what I mean? Like it was just you. Right. right. Or, or maybe she did just in a different sense. In a in different a different sense and I'm still figuring that out. Yeah. So what I did, um, it, my birthday was the first of August, the first week of August, August 3rd is my birthday. I made the decision to leave the church on the 23rd. Mm. I, my husband and I divided, decided to divorce on the 30th. And then August 3rd was my birthday. And I said, for my birthday, I'm giving myself a, the gift of authenticity, permission mm. to be myself. And so I did a big, long Facebook post to everybody in the world that I knew saying, wow. hey, world, it's my birthday. And here's some stuff I want to share about who I am at this age. I, um, my, I'm not moving to Seattle after all, because everybody knew I was making plans. Mm-hmm. So I'm not moving because my husband and I are no longer going, to, we're not going to stay married. Secondly, I think it's important for you to know that I'm leaving the faith and I, you can believe what you want to believe. I'm not going to try to press you to believe anything different, yeah. but I think it's important for you to know because I was very stalwart before and now I, I'm, I'm a different person. Then I need a job network with who do you know? How can you help me? I can't get a right. teaching job right now because I'm packing up my life. I don't have time to go set up a classroom and start a school year. I mean, that's stressful. I, I am barely surviving here and I need a place to live. Wow. And I had, I made this post and I was very true and authentic. Who do you know who could help? And a friend of mine said, come and stay with me. Mm-hmm. And I lived in, in a basement apartment for about four months as I was recovering from these major life changes, trying to find work. I was substitute teaching. I took a job just at an elementary school here close to daybreak. And um, I was in the first part of January. And I worked that job for seven weeks, but my mental health was on a gradual decline. I couldn't do it. I just couldn't. Mm -hmm. I was in such a dark place. And additionally, I wasn't showing up for the kids the way they deserved. You Mm -hmm. know, it was, they, they weren't happy with me. I wasn't happy with them. And the former teacher, like the teacher that I used to be who loved teaching and engaging with children mm-hmm. and helping them was like, Kate, this is not good for you. So mm-hmm. I resigned. I, I quit. That's big. That's, that's big. You needed money. You had money, but you weren't given the the little ones what they needed. A hundred percent. Yeah. Like you knew you were capable of, capable of prior. Yeah. You knew you had some heavy stuff going on, Kate. You right. Could just, you could just went through the motions and kept getting that check. Yeah, I have, but I was unhappy. I came home every day, just, just so unhappy. The kids were unhappy. Mm-hmm. Not that the, the school was great. The administrator was great. Everything was great. It was just, yeah. it no longer fit. And so when right. I look at some of these changes in my life, I, I liken it to like a snake shedding its skin. Mm-hmm. These were parts of my life that fit me once upon a time. 
teaching used to fit me. Being a member of this, this religion used to fit me. Being in this marriage used to fit me, no longer fits me. And mm -hmm. so I had to shed that skin. And what I was trying to do with this teaching position was trying to cram that skin back on me. Fit, dang it, mm -hmm. fit. And it didn't. And I learned the hard way that that was, that was a problem. So fortunately, I'm not destitute. When we sold the house, I, uh, I got a larger percentage of the equity of the home because I, we rolled the alimony into my, oh, in, yeah. into the, mm -hmm. uh, we rolled it into the sale of the house. Yeah. So I've had that to work with. I've had great opportunities to just get to know, um, uh, get a chance to, I mean, I'm working different jobs here and there. I substitute taught. I taught. I then got a job as a studio teacher, which is really cool. And so Tell I us continue. about that. Yeah, yeah, I think that you have another kind of fun little job that you picked up, right? Right, right. So the other job I took as a stu studio teacher, it happened last fall. And this is where social media can be a great tool. Yeah. where I was on Facebook and some of my friends knew that I was looking for work and there I'm a theater kid. I know a lot of people in theater and film and someone saw a post about how there was a project being filmed last October in North Salt Lake and they needed a studio teacher, someone to teach the kids on set uh, the children actors. And I, I responded to this post. I said, I'm, I'm, I'm t a licensed teacher. I can do this. And so they hired me on the spot and I went up to North Salt Lake for a few weeks and I got to work with the children actors. So, and oh there are God. laws in place. Yeah, there are laws in place where the kids can't work past a certain hour. They've got to make sure that they are um, taken care of. We just need to make sure that we don't have any, you know, Miley Cyrus's yeah. or, you know, Shia LaBeouf's. You know, you got to also serve as a welfare agent for these kids. Make sure that they're taken care of. So you really were playing advocate as well. Yes, yeah. definitely an advocate. Mm -hmm. And then in addition, I got a chance to, um, then just this last May. Oh, that, that was a lot of fun. I had a great time, but I was like, that was a one and done. Maybe I don't want to do this. Maybe I will. So I put on Utah Film Commission, uh, my little profile, my mm -hmm. everything that I needed. Um, and just in May, I got a call from another company down in Southern Utah, where there's a Western film that was being filmed down there. And I got to go have a chance to be the studio teacher for these kids on set down there as well. Oh, and then awesome. I just got back from Moab, where I got a chance to work with a couple of kids, with one child in, uh, and I can say this one, it's called Navajo Highways which is oh. this beautiful, beautiful educational program uh, designed for Navajo kids to learn Diné, to learn their native tongue, to learn about their culture and their history. And it's, it's so fun. And I feel like what's happening is that I need to get a charger for my computer. So I'm going to talk while I'm going to grab that because that's what we do when I'm looking at this and I'm trying to stay focused. And I'm like, I can't do it. I just can't. All right. We're, like, We're going to die. <laughs> We're going to die. Oh my goodness. So I'm going to go for as long as I can until I get this. I'm so embarrassed. I'm sorry. You're good. Don't be. You know, this is great. This is what makes this so, so great. Uh, I am a little ADD, friends, just so you know. No, you're but good. I'm ready to get set and we're back to being charged. And now, oh, and good. We're not going to. Woohoo. You okay. saved it. So we anyway, all were nervous. <laughs> Had a little tour of my apartment as we were going. So anyhow, I um, as I'm going through these adventures of my life, I feel like I'm also living in my 20s for the first time. Mm -hmm. Because in the culture in which I was raised, there were very high expectations that were given. And I didn't feel like I had a voice or a choice, or I didn't feel like I had an opportunity to really figure out who I was and what I mm -hmm. wanted in this life. And so it was graduate from high school, enroll in college. Okay, now go on a two-year, go on a mission, come back, graduate, get married, pop out babies. It was just, it was very prescriptive. And mm -hmm. I didn't feel like I had time to really figure out who I was and what I wanted. I did not get to go backpack across Europe or try different jobs. And so what I was doing then was just doing what was expected of me. Yeah. Without yeah. really feeling like this is what I wanted. 
And then now here I am in my mid forties with this midlife awakening or glow up or whatever. And I have the time now to explore what I like and what I want to do. And I'm thrilled to death. And so I worked at a nursery for a little while and it just wrapped up um, because it was seasonal. I So I don't have that kind of work right now, but I am working toward building my life coaching and public speaking business as well. I And I'm so thankful for the opportunity I had to go to these meetings here in Daybreak, the community, the, the business meetings, because I don't know the first thing about entrepreneurship. I worked You're in learning. A, I know, I, but I was working <laughs> in a public school for all of these years where I didn't, you don't learn that stuff yeah. as, as an educator. It's same thing. And I have nothing against education. I am a yeah. huge advocate of education. And I think teachers are phenomenal and they're not paid or respected the way yeah. they need to be. Yeah, It just doesn't fit for me any longer. And unfortunately, I didn't have, I was never taught business. I don't know the first thing. So I'm going to these meetings and networking, getting to know people like you, Blaine and Bex and how, and the mar remarkable people at these meetings, uh, networking is so great where I'm, I say, I think I want to do some life coaching. And then there's a life coach there at this, at the, at the meeting saying, Oh, yep. I can help you come yep. on. And we're going to, we're going to talk, we're going to visit, or I want to be a public speaker. Ooh, I've got some great tools and ideas for you. Mm -hmm. And so they're helping, they're helping me as I'm figuring out who my, who I am and what my life is. So I, and I'm so glad that you say that, that you are moving into life coaching, because I was just thinking, you know, you're not alone in this journey. You're mm -hmm. definitely not alone here in this state, in, in your path specifically, you know, with um, the social circles that are often tied to the church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, right? Like, so you're definitely not alone in this space. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the biggest message, right? To share here is not only have you realized that you've now made a network outside of that and, yes. and which has helped for you social wise, you know, psych social wise. And here you are now turning this difficult, challenging experience into something where you're able to help people, whether it's a similar journey or something that is a little bit outside of that, maybe not your exact journey, but you're able to provide some tools and knowledge and education for others. Like that is so powerful for me to hear that. So just thank you. I guess I just wanted to say thank you for sharing your message and doing that then, you know, in turn for others to help them through their hard, whatever that looks like, or maybe. Right. Thank yeah. you. It's amazing. I mean, she had the right spirit when she walked into the DBC meeting the first time and said, I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm here to be a sponge. I remember this. Yeah. She, and that's what she's been doing. And that's, that's really what an entrepreneur's spirit really is, is just to wow. soak it in, soak it. In. And you're doing that you've opened your mind up. You've, you've got rid of some of those chains. You said you were homophobic at one point, And then now you've yeah. got a transgender child. You had the flag behind you in the background. That's going to open up new opportunities. Am I right? Yeah. In fact, speaking of, I started a TikTok channel when I was going through this whole thing. I mean, I had a friend who was doing TikTok and she knew of my life changes. And she said, Kate, why don't you start this to kind of document your journey? And I'm like, are you sure? And she said, yes. And so I started this. I call it Midlife Exmo Mama because <laughs> that kind of, I like alliteration for one. Yeah. And it also, yeah. it, those are my identifiers. I'm going through this midlife crisis. I'm, I, I identify as an Exmo and I'm, I'm a mama. I'm a mom, yeah. My, yeah. my child. And I started documenting my journey and made so many connections with people who were just like me. And I didn't feel alone. And I've been actually able to meet people that I met on TikTok in, in person. I'm using, I, yes, maybe I spend a little bit too much time on social media, but I use it as a tool. Yeah. Like how can I connect? How can I share my experience? How can I learn from other people's experiences? And how can I share? Um, just this last March, there was uh, David Archuleta. Uh, mm -hmm. released a song called Hell Together. Yeah. where He talks about his journey of, coming out as gay and leaving mm. the Mormon church. Mm -hmm. And then his mom made this beautiful 
transformation where she said, ultimately, if you're going to hell, then we're going to go to hell together. Mm. And she left the church and loved and embraced him for who he is. And mm. I just bawled my eyes out because Aww. the song hit me so hard because I was like, that's my journey. That's my journey too. And yeah. so I did a TikTok video um, back in March set to this song. And I kind of talked about my journey to challenge my own biases and mm -hmm. to learn and grow as a mom where I thought I was, I thought that I had all the answers that I knew everything, but I didn't. And, and Theo and I really struggled for a very, very, very long time. Mm. We, they didn't like me. I don't like them. We had this really awful relationship, but it was after I did the work mm. where I looked inward. I held up that mirror and said, what can I do to change? What can I do to change? I can't change my child. No, you can Not love your child. I can love my, I, but at the time, and I accept your child. Yeah. But at the time, I couldn't because of these yeah. biases that but I right, had. Right, right. Yeah. Things just blocked me. So I had to do the work. I did about a year and a half of studying mm. and listening to podcasts and reading the literature, talking to other parents with LGBTQ youth. And one day, um, it, it was last last year in in March. Um, Theo was in a play at the Pioneer Theater Company, and Everyone in the cast and the crew used their pronouns, they, them. And I hadn't at, until that point. And they used those pronouns. And I saw the difference it made. In the year. I saw like how they lit up, how they felt loved, how they felt validated. They felt more loved and validated by complete strangers than they did by their own mom. Wow. And that killed me inside. And I said, you know what? Yeah. I'm wrong. I'm wrong. And that very day I said, you know what, Theo? And Theo is not the name they went by at the time. That's also a new transition we're, we're going through. But I said, you know what? I, I'm i going to start using your pronouns because I was wrong. And wow. I need to love you. And our relationship is now better than it's ever been. Mm. So I made this TikTok video about my journey. And Good Morning America <laughs> found this TikTok video. And they invited me and Theo to come be on this show this week. <laughs> Blaine literally just threw, flew off his chair, <laughs> fell off his chair, whatever I'm trying to say. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So we get a chance to go and share our journey and share our experience because this is something that I think other parents need to hear. Yeah. I think they need yeah. to hear that if you have a child that has come out as LGBTQ, you can't control that. You can't. What you can do, parents, is you can challenge your beliefs. You can challenge those things that really put a wedge between you and your child. But I also want to have a message for those LGBTQ kids. It's give your parents the space to learn and grow mm. because they've got a lifetime of unlearning to do. Mm. It's a, like they've been raised with it's societal expectations with indoctrination with whatever that parents have been exposed to these things. And they, it's not like you click on a light one day, you're homophobic and the next day, Oh, yeah. I'm going to the pride parade with you. Mm -hmm. It's not like that at all. It's you for those LGBTQ youth is you need to give your parents space to learn and to grow. But at the same time, you need to advocate for yourself. Yeah. You can't just allow them to treat you poorly. You can't allow yourself to be abused or belittled or whatever. And sometimes those boundaries come at a cost. Sometimes you lose relationships with people until they're willing to respect you and your boundaries. Mm -hmm. So I think, I think not just LGBTQ parents, but all parents, all, all people parents. Can hear yeah. this. Because it's not just a it's not just educating the people who are in the thick of it. It's let's educate everybody, even if they're this far removed from the the rainbow flag educate them on why on what on all of it and i think that would help a lot of this i love what you said out there yeah yeah i love what you said and as you were speaking i'm like well you know maybe that's something within our dbc network too we could talk about as an admin and get more information from you kate regarding the support groups because i think a lot of parents having the foundation 
whether it's here in the state of Utah and, you know, the predominant background here or elsewhere, I think that this is a struggle for them on the what to do, what to say, how to interact, how to, you know, and so I think hearing those experiences through other parents as well, how did we get through to our um, child and break through conversations where we can mend that relationship because we've said something stupid or we've, you know, done something that we're just ingrained with, you know, our blinders on and we didn't mean to be hurtful, but it happened. And, mm -hmm. you know, still those to save those relationships. So we'd love to get more information. Maybe that's something we look at, Blaine. Yeah, but it's been so great and insightful just hearing from you every time you talk. I'm just like, oh, she's so inspiring. Yeah. Hey, where can, people, where can we find? Yeah. You know, get in touch. Like if people are listening right now and they want to talk to you or want something, some inspiration, want you to be a, a coach for them or, or, or speak to them. How? How do they get in touch? Yeah, where with do we you? find you? That's a good question. Um, I've actually, <laughs> I'm still in the process of building. I, I tell people all the time, I'm a work in pro progress. I don't That's have okay. anything. You can find me on Facebook. My profile, Kate Kendrick, is public. You could reach out to me that way. I've got my TikTok channel, which is Midlife Exmo Mama. Um, and I am in the process of putting together a website, which I will be launching this next month. Awesome. And I'm going to be talking about... Um, uh, life coaching, public speaking opportunities to be, um, yeah, it's TikTok is, is, uh, it's midlife Exmo mama. Oh, oh yeah. Let's get it right. Let's get it right. Here. You got to have that first M in there to make it triple. Mm. <laughs> 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 that's, that's where, that's where you can find me for now. Um, I'm, I'm in the process of building things and I'm grateful Thank you so much for having me on for this chance to share and to, to let you know how incredibly grateful I am for the tools and the resources you've provided as the Daybreak business community um, for me, but all and for giving me space to learn and to grow. Oh, yes. Yeah. That's at, what we're all about. Because at first I was a little nervous walking in, like all of these people have their businesses. They've got everything under their belts. They know what they're doing. And I don't. <laughs> But you're like, well, I don't know. We, we don't know better, Blaine. We're just laughing over here because we're all at different places, right? Different right. places. And, but we're and happy to help each other. That's the biggest thing. We're happy we're to happy help each other. Kate, thank you so much for jumping on with us. Yeah. Midlife Exmo Mama at TikTok. Kate Kendrick on Facebook. And the website will be coming up. I will let you know the name of my yeah. biz coaching business because I was really big into social emotional learning and growth for students sel it's kind of a bad name for certain people but it's life-changing it changed my life so my business is called social emotional learning for grown-ass adults i love it love it because we need to learn the same skills that are being taught to our kids in school 100 mm -hmm. so great having you on the show thank you again kate hey well, thanks so much you too i appreciate it right now but i gotta tell people real quick that you're gonna be hearing a lot more from kate kate Kendrick yeah. That's a little, that's a little, seed. you see that we've planted a seed, Kate. You're going to hear a lot more from her. I promise. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, guys. You. We'll see everybody here next week. Hey, thanks so much, everybody. Bye.